Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I'm Josh Streff Hayes, and this is part two of my insane journey through the maddening reality that is Otherland. Back in part one, we'd started our crazy journey in the obliterated cosmic remains of an orphanage, fought through the neon punk Egyptian level, marveled at the World War I era godlike deity, survived the chess battlefield, explored the central Lambda Mall, got a free house that looks like Padme's apartment, then went to save the water village. We've experienced broken menus, buggy hit detections, straight up bad special attacks, and all manner of things in between, from legs bending up inside the character model to clipping it interfaces to discovering I was the only player on the server. In short, Otherland has been a roller coaster so far, and in this episode it gets worse. Prepare for bondage scientists, jungle temples, and a six hour grind for a single quest. Before we begin, consider dropping a like on the video or subscribing to the channel. I mean, this is part two, so if you're watching this, most of you probably already have. So a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and Twitch subs. These are the people who make this stupid adventure adventure possible. Right, part two. Let's go. I'd like to share with you a really quick weird thing that happened during the premiere of episode one of this series. I was sat on my phone watching the video and using the live chat to talk to a few of you as it premiered, and the video happened to say Otherland is based on a book by an author called Tad Williams, and my partner who was in the room said, Tad Williams, I know that name. And then they handed me this. I genuinely did not know that we owned this. This is a really thick book. And now I've got no excuse to not read the whole thing. We ended last episode having just saved the water village from the Celestial Dragon and I'd return to the Lambda Mall. I now need to head back to Zabu's apartment, that's the magical sky door place, and inform the admins, but they are not here. Typical admins, never around when you need them. So we go and hunt them down. Finding the admins is a pretty straightforward quest. All you need to do is talk to this random, nameless simuloid that you've never spoken to before and have no reason to ever assume is important, and he'll know exactly what you need and send you to find a guy called Mr. Tim who's in the Lantern District. So back through the main portal we go. The Lantern District aesthetic is very cyberpunk Chinatown. You've got red lanterns, closed in streets, still got the sci-fi overall tone and it looks great. This is another lovely place to be. Mr. Tim is hiding inside this bar, chilling in his suit and surrounded by female simuloids, clearly living his best life. And he wants us to go to the upper upper bad district and find some guy called The Plague who hangs out in a hacker shop. I love how lazy the naming of places is in this game. Village surrounded by water? Water village. District that's pretty bad? Bad district. Shop for hackers? Hacker shop. More running and the upper bad district again looks great. The environmental design continues to be awesome. One of the reasons I'm determined to finish this game and make these videos is to capture the extreme aesthetic beauty of the game's environments. I mean, look, the hacker shop has huge tendrils reaching out from it and geometric light patterns around the front of it in the air above you. This is awesome. Finish the quest by talking to a dude inside and we get some sunglasses. Oh yeah, now we are properly futuristic. Next part is to follow the plague as he runs to a taxi rank. This is an NPC escort mission, except he runs slightly slower than you. He'll randomly stop and run backwards quite often. There are no enemies that attack you, meaning nothing to protect him from beyond his own stupidity. And if you get too far away, you fail the mission. Failing a mission, by the way, means you get shown the great tooltip of abandon the mission and accept it again. There is no retry button because that would take too much programming work. While running, here's an amazing thing I discovered. This game has a wiki, and it's actually quite detailed, and it seems to be kept alive by like one person, so whoever you are, thank you. My absolute favourite thing about the wiki though is if you go to the quest section, before listing any of the quests, there are three suggested articles you read, and they are got stuck, failing to progress, and can't hand in. Clearly, if that's the first thing the wiki thinks you need to read, the questing system might need some work. The plague reaches the taxi rank and then we are ambushed by... Have a guess. Did you guess giant spiders? Because 
If you did, you're right, but that was also a very weird thing to guess. Defeat the ambush, interact with this podium, and take the taxi back to the Lantern District, and then the game crashes. Well, let's hope this doesn't become a thing. Maybe there were just too many players for the server to handle. Reboot back into the club, and now we need to find Mr. Tim's assistant. And just look at this. This is Mr. Tim. This is his assistant. It is literally the same model with a child's face. This guy is brown nosing his boss hard, but he sends us to the upper bad sector. Again, I love the environment. Feels like a high quality PlayStation 3 game. Remember that god awful Judge Dread game on PS2, Dread vs. Death? This is what that should have looked like. We need to find the stairs to go down to the lower section of the upper bad sector. And I hope you're keeping up with these levels and sectors. God, this is so nicely designed. Every moment playing this game, I actually feel sad that an environment this nice is wasted on a game this dead. This is so perfectly dystopian. Break into this warehouse by going through the open door and kill some corrupted policemen. How do we know they're corrupted policemen? Well, we know because they're called corrupted policemen. Maybe... Maybe consider increasing the naming length limit of your NPCs or reducing the font size so it all displays or just do something. You cannot have looked at this and gone, yes, this is the quality we are happy with. Sometimes the shooting just doesn't. See the chat box to the bottom left. See how it's filled with unable to use chosen ability. That's from me holding down left click while aiming at enemies. Sometimes the game treats enemies as protected NPCs and doesn't let you attack them. Then, after a few minutes, it catches up with itself and goes, oh, right, that's an enemy. Yeah, now you can shoot them fine. God, the net code in this game must look like a plate of spaghetti. Save this dude being held in the very secure upstairs room of between some shelving, and he asks us to go and kill Bruno, so we kill Bruno. Bruno is just a basic NPC with more health. Bosses don't have mechanics in this game. Nothing has mechanics in this game. Everything is just health and damage output. All fights are exactly the same. Tank the damage, use a healing item, occasionally fire a special ability if the game thinks you've been a good boy and lets you use one. Ugh, then we use this machine to contact Rennie. Oh yeah, find the Abins. I forgot we were doing all that. Chat to a hologram. She tells us to run back to the portal and teleport back to the main area. Look at this inconsistent NPC aggro range. I can run right past an enemy and they just don't care, but then when I leave the building, everyone behind me decides to attack me. What kind of checks are you using for NPC aggro? Run back through the city and arrive back at Zabu's apartment. Everyone is cool again and we're sent to help out the bug world. Alright, Starship Troopers, here we go. I'm doing my part. The bug world, literally called the bug world, again looks awesome. Giant glass biome, everything is white and clinical, there are sci-fi looking solar structures everywhere and most of the scientists are in lab uniforms, apart from the few that we'll meet later who are dressed in dominatrix gear. First quest is to talk to the scientists because... Honestly, I'm not sure. None of them actually need anything from me. And now we need to go and kill some bugs and burn some nests. But look at the quest tracker in the top right. It only seems to work when I'm standing on this floor by this NPC. Why? Is this a feature? If this is a feature, like the bug planet blocks your signal and you have to manually hunt down quest objectives, that's awesome. That'd be quite clever design. But I've got a feeling this is actually just a bug, which actually meta kind of fits thematically being on the bug planet and all. I guess we'll have to ignore all in-game bugs here and assume they're just part of a very meta gameplay joke, even though I'm absolutely convinced they're not. Shoot some bugs and burn the nests, and I think you'll appreciate the excellent nest burning animation just as much as I did. So here is the full animation of burning a nest with sound. Enjoy the flame graphics. Wasn't that beautiful. Some hand wiggling, it disappears, red smoke that I guess is meant to be fire, and then fire sound effects just blaze into life. Absolutely stunning design all around. Now while the bug planet looks acceptably lovely, here's what I'm thinking while playing. Did this game blow its stylistic load at the start? Was that reality tunnel and the virtual simulation chaos the best we're going to get? Did they hire some super awesome surreal designer for that bit and then pass the rest of the game off onto a generic studio? I do hope not, but I am beginning to wonder. 
Kill the bugs and burn the nest, and now we have another escort mission, taking this science lady across the bridge. And you know what's annoying me the most about this bit? It's not how she runs slow, or how she also runs backward occasionally. It's how the shadows are wrong. Every shadow on every object is going in the same direction, meaning there is clearly one light source in the sky. But when you look at the skybox, it is off by quite a wide margin. The sun is over there behind the clouds and so should be sending shadows in a different direction. This is such a simple fix. Just rotate the skybox and have the sun in the right place. Another small detail that I assume Q&A missed. I mean, if this game even had Q&A, might not have. Now the bugs attack, both enemy-wise and mechanically. We've got giant ants, and our old friend the Swivel Stance comes back. These ants do actually look quite nice, but so far every enemy has been exactly the same. The only difference between a boss and a regular enemy is how it looks and how much health it has. Science Lady arrives safely and now wants us to get five samples from five live ants. Thankfully, the ants are just super chill with us taking samples from them, so I wiggle my hands at five ants and then hand back whatever it was I just collected. Now we're off up the hill to restart the generators. There's no sound for this, no generator starting noise, just more hand wiggling and boom, you've done it. Oh, these are giant biomes and all. They're pretty cool. They're filled with the same model as the bug nest from earlier, but scaled up. And is that, is that a person in there? Can I, can I go in? This person is a shop, a very hidden shop. How very 90s video game of you. One random secret vendor hidden in a biome on a bug planet. They sell some cool shoulder pads that I currently can't afford. Reset all the generators, then defend myself from three waves of ants. Again, I cannot overstate how every fight is literally exactly the same. Point crosshair at enemy, hold left click, repeat. Kill the large boss ant on the final wave, then head back to the science lady, and now we're sent to the main building to meet the rest of the team. Run over to the main building and oh my god, that's it. I realise what it is finally. Right, when you see enemies die and items explode out of them, this B-shaped thing is money, referred to as bits because the game likes being all virtual and computery. But I've been racking my brains knowing it reminds me of something. I didn't know what, but I knew I'd seen this symbol before. It's the Bing logo. The money icon in this game looks exactly like the logo for Bing. Wow, if you're gonna copy a logo for something, don't go for a second-rate search engine. Arrive at the much larger building, and honestly, it's awesome. You've got this blue energy shield, some giant moths flying up in the raptors, multiple levels of white science stuff going on, but then you've also got these white light poles that don't cast shadows, or the working pods all facing random directions. It's a super odd combination of excellent environmental design and lazy video game placement of assets. It's such a shame, a cool looking biome like this in a game that no one will play. And oh god, this is bad. Okay, first major sound effect problem. I run up to this scientist here, and there's no music here, but there is an ant inside a glass display behind this NPC, and the ant is attacking the glass, and it's playing the ant attack sound at full volume. Oh, this is awful. Just listen to this. Yeah, that got really old really quickly. I accept some more quests and say hi to every single scientist. Why? Why does this happen? No one does this. Have you ever arrived somewhere in real life and your first order is go and say hello to absolutely everyone? No, no one does that. But then I eat my words because we meet Dontery. Or more correctly, we meet Dontery's boobs. While other scientists went with the classic white coat and gloves, she arrived straight from the bondage party and she has no time for changing. Seriously, game designers, why? Why have you done this? What made you dress a scientist NPC in a lab like this? I mean, God bless you for doing it, but still, why? Boobs McGee, I mean Don Tariq, needs us to go and kill some spiders, so off we go to shoot some more things. It's odd because the combat is what I look forward to the least in this game. I'm more interested in seeing where this batshit insane plot goes to, or what weird and wonderful locations we get to visit next. While I'm killing these spiders, I'm thinking... We're proper internet gaming explorers right now, you and me. We're playing through a game that very few people have. We're seeing enemy models and environments that most average MMO players won't even know exist. We're documenting here. We're doing something special. Kill the giant boss spider and then run back to base. It seems even quest areas follow the same gameplay loop of hub quest of little givers and then satellite areas you go and do the quests in. 
Let them know that all the spiders are dead. Go and pay Don to his boobs a quick visit. And now we are off to the lower outpost, the one that looks like it's been taken over by a giant termite mound. Oh, if you jump at the edge of this energy fence, your character model twitches back and forth while you're in the air. If you're watching, developers, I am doing a lot of quality assurance work for you right now. Down at the outpost, and I find this strange orange tube thing. No clue what it is, so I activate it and... Oh, awesome, it's a teleport tube. But it doesn't have a loading screen. It just flies you in real time from place to place. Oh, this is a great way to get around. More sci-fi games should have this. Okay, we are taking one of these every chance we get. Turn around and take the tube straight back down, because it really is quite a fun way to get around, then run over to the lower outpost. Run the diagnostics on the outpost computer, defend from three waves of bugs, because it seems this whole area has a thing for the defend from three waves mechanic. Then ride the awesome orange laser back and go to the lab. We're now told to take the portal down to the ancient ruins and ooh, exploring sounds interesting, so through the portal we go. We are in a jungle and the portal drops us high up over some water and we crash down into this lake. This is a great way of having a player enter a new area. We don't have a way back, we're confused, we're lost and the only thing we can do is explore. This is the exact feeling you want in a jungle section. The jungle itself is awesome. Rolling mud piles, giant trees stretching into the sky, vines everywhere, muted browns and green tones with vibrant streaks between them. This is so different to the lab. Highlights, again, how nice the level design is. Run around for a bit and find this dude with a quest symbol above his head. He needs me to follow some tracks. Nothing better to do, so okay. Now questing in the jungle is awful. Not because the quests are badly written, or hard to find, or boring, no, none of that. Questing here sucks because there are so many little bug enemies and they will constantly attack you. But I mean, okay, it's a combat game. You can kill them. Well, no, not all the time. Sometimes you will be attacked by an invisible enemy. You can't see it, you can't attack it, you can't stop it. You can only run away and wait until it stops. And there's no way to prevent this. And if you're attacked while interacting with a quest object, you're interrupted and the interaction doesn't count. So here, I need to interact with that bit of wood on the floor and I've killed all of the ladybugs around me. But just being near the wood makes me take damage for some reason from seemingly nowhere. I have looked all around. I cannot see what's hitting me. And for some reason, even when my character is stood in the out of combat pose, not taking damage, I can't use my rest and recover health ability. The only way I can do this quest, and it takes me about quarter of an hour to work this out, is by sneaking forward very, very slowly and interacting with the wood right on the edge of the interaction range. Tracking quest Finally done, and now we need to trap a giant ladybird. Yeah, you didn't think we'd be fighting giant mutant ladybirds this episode, did you? Neither did I. That's the magic of Otherland. It's not constrained by normal gaming limitations like making sense or being consistent. I have to shoot this ladybug to lure her to me, ignoring the other small bugs attacking me. The trap is one of those snapping bear trap things, but it's giant, so I'm super excited to see what graphical effects happen. Will it snap shut? Will it crush her? Will she just disappear? Who knows? Let's find out. A few minutes of luring later, here it is, here we go, and... Oh. She just phases onto it, then an energy cylinder traps her. That was... unexpected. I didn't expect this to be sci-fi. I thought this would be much more low-tech. The hunter dude thanks me and I take his token of appreciation back to his village. This is the Bogart village and it's a perfectly fine village. Tents are well laid out, NPCs are milling around, there's a defensive perimeter built. This is a great little set piece. There's a lot of character here, a lot of stuff to love, a lot of small details that again you can tell they've focused on. The way it's laid out is believable. I chat to the shaman and he tells me to gather the three bravest warriors in the camp and then talk to him again. Of course it's three, why would it be any other number while we're here? So off we go, find the first warrior and he laughs at me for being weak and challenges me to a fight. Okay mate, bring it on. But the fight isn't with him, it's with some tiny dudes I find it very difficult to aim at. And oh good, there's three waves of them, because come on, what else did you expect? But here is where the problems start. The first wave of small enemies is fine, but the second wave throws a grenade at me. This grenade drains my health super fast. 
it creates a dangerous AoE area and I can't kill them before they throw it. I can't out heal it. I can't run away from it. This grenade, when you see the effect, is a straight up death sentence. Remember, failing these quests means you need to abandon then re-accept. So I try again, and again, and again, and I die every time. I decide to leave this guy for a moment and go and finish the other two warriors mini quests. One of them needs me to set up some spike traps by the gates outside the village, the other needs me to go and find his missing weapons and armor scattered around. Both of these tasks are super simple. There's no combat involved, it just takes time, so they're not an issue. But this combat quest, this is a problem. I don't know if it's designed to be done as a team, but I am definitely struggling to do it solo. I check the wiki, which again, I'm amazed even exists, and the quest is indeed listed, but there's no extra info. Nothing says it's meant to be difficult. I die again and again and again, and my equipment breaks, and I repair it at the shop, and I buy the best healing packs. I am the right level, I have the best weapons available to me, and I cannot, no matter how hard I try, kill the second wave of smaller enemies. I cannot kill them before that grenade appears, and that grenade appearing is game over. I can't do it. I'm not tough enough to tank it, I'm not damaging enough to kill him before he throws it. I even charge up all my special attacks on all my weapons and unleash all of them at the same time. Nothing. I can't do this. Right, let's explore around a bit, try and find a solution. There's a portal, so I take it back to the bug main world, and then... Oh, this is quite jarring. Notice how all the portals have little location images in a circle in front of them, like the city or the water village, and most of them are in-game renders of the place you're going to go to. But the bug world is just a picture of a bug, like an actual real photo. It doesn't fit the graphical style of the rest of the game at all. Go back to the Bugland, then run to the other portal, which is back at the start, because it seems that not all of the portals are connected to all of the other portals, and you have to go from portal to portal to portal to get back to the actual main city. Back in the Lambda Mall, and I find two quests I've not yet done. The first is just speak to all of the shop owners, which I'm guessing I was meant to do earlier. It's more running around and busy work meant to help you navigate, but uh, it does take me to the auction house. And here is what I find. Nothing. Literally nothing. There are no items at all listed. Remember, this is the only server. If there was anything for sale, it would be here. I check every category. I even try the other auction house nodes. Same story, it still just opens the same auction house. So I put up a health pack for sale and yeah, I am the only player in the world with an item for sale on this game. This feels kind of powerful. I mean, I've played dead games before, but Never this dead, never actually completely deserted dead. It's a surreal feeling. The fact that this code is sat on a server somewhere. The NPCs are still walking around, the economy is still frozen, the assets are still ready to be used. The adventure is still ready to be had and I am the only human connecting to it. This is as close to a true solo MMO as you can possibly get. I find this shop just off to the side called the Soma Forge. It sells special weapons and upgrades. I can't afford anything and grinding for it would take weeks. I repair my armor again while I'm here, then I just keep on exploring. Otherland is a perfect example of style over substance, like painting a rotten apple in a delicious shiny red. If you were to look at screenshots or even watch short clips of gameplay, it doesn't look that bad. Some cutscenes look downright gorgeous. But the experience of playing this game is a complex mix of sadness, intrigue, enjoyment, and regret. I'm constantly thinking about what could have been. And apparently, so were the developers, because a bit more research reveals they were involved in a massive positive review scam and were caught out paying for glowing Steam reviews. In the centre of the Lambda Mall, round the back of all the shops, I find this giant sparkling building. I head inside and this is Mr. J's. A connecting social hub. Remember the social versus normal character choice at the very start? Well, this is what it's all about. You see, they wanted Otherland to be a place people just chilled out in and existed, sort of like Second Life, and this social hub was going to be the beating heart of the community. Mr. J's is a connecting central room, and all around the edge are various clubs and party rooms, portals to access them, each style very different, each aimed at a different demographic. 
I try Tony's first. It's a 70s themed disco. Psychedelic colours, that 70s font that everyone uses. 70s inspired sci-fi clothes. There's nothing to do here. It's just a place to stand around in if you enjoy this kind of style. So I go back to Mr. J's and try somewhere else. How about the Black Room? It's a black and white minimalist club. You start inside this clinical white tunnel and then run through into an industrial style darkened dance hall. Yeah, it's visually striking, but much like a club in real life right now, there's no one else here. Back to the central Mr. J's and then another club, a nurse themed one this time. Blood cell designs on the floor, huge nurse statues flanking the bar, hospital style beds and equipment around the seating area. It's very nicely designed, but it's devoid of human life. I get what they were trying to do here, they just didn't succeed at all. Back outside onto the main concourse, I run around some more and oh yes, I spot another one of those awesome transport tubes. I love these things, let's take this and see where it takes us. Flying through the city, and I still adore how they don't use loading screens for this, instead having you actually travel from A to B, meaning they must always have the areas loaded in. I wonder what happens if there's another player coming from the other direction. I wonder if you can even see them. Can more than one player use the tube at the same time? It's unlikely that we'll ever know. Top of the tube, it's a 70s themed bar, literally called 70s bar, but this is eerie because there's absolutely no music. It's deadly silent. There's nothing, nothing except clapping. This customer is watching a dancer on the table do the chicken dance, then clapping every few seconds. This is very unsettling. Back to the jungle, and the unfortunate truth is I can't find a way to win. I can't do this. I try the jungle quest again and again and again, and I die every time. I throw myself against this quest for about an hour and a half, closing in on two hours, and I cannot pass it. There is no way to survive. It's a main story quest, and I can't pass it. I don't have the health, I don't have the damage, I don't have the tactics, the combat things just don't work against me, the grenade is literally unbeatable. I have the best that I can get, I can't even spend real money to get better items, I can't do this. So unfortunately, and I was expecting more as well, I guess this is the story of where Otherland ends. I can't progress. The only thing I can think of is that because I'm a damage healing class, I don't have the health or defense needed to tank the grenade. Maybe it was meant to be done as a team, or maybe it can only be soloed by a tank class. But the only way I would even know that would be to level a tank class all the way from the start, to literally begin again and go through everything in the game again, just on the tiny off chance that another class might fare better, and I'm not going to do that, am I? Fine. I start a new character, I pick warrior, and I do absolutely everything again. I play through the psychedelic start again. We escape from the prison with the weird rock sting again. I walk through the portals again. I change my skin again. I explore my use space again. We run around the city and talk to all the shopkeepers again. I even go and check the auction house and yet my items are still the only ones there. I travel to the water village. I kill the deadly rocks again. I do the stupid scouting. I kill the monkey men, save the trees, manage not to bug the fox out, fight the demons, lose to the celestial dragon, hunt down the admins, find Mr. Tim, travel back to Upper Bad, follow the plague dude, kill the spider ambush, find Mr. Tim Jr., kill the corrupted police, go back to the bug planet, talk to the scientists, burn the hives, kill the spiders, stare at Dontary's boobs, drop back down into the jungle, kill the ladybugs, lure the queen, help the other warriors, and finally, after six new hours from start to finish, I am staring at the stupid grenade quest again. I spend an entire day leveling a new tank just for the time tiny, tiny chance that this might work, and melee combat in this game is 
awful. Hits haven't connected for the entire six hours I've been playing. Items don't seem to have any improvement. Special attacks are all just random. Well, it might work, I don't know. Let's just hope it has been an absolute ordeal to get to this bit. So with my items repaired and weapons charged, healing packs in the quick slots and heart in my throat, I try again. I did it. I did it. I killed it. I killed it before it threw the grenade. Yes, the warrior has amazing AOE and everything died and even the third wave boss went down quicker. The warrior does more damage than the sniper. Yes, thank God it worked. I can keep going. We can explore more of other land. Oh, thank God the six hours was worth it. I am so happy this worked. Replaying this game was an emotional nightmare. Knowing how cool the game world is keeps me going. But the atrocious combat system made me want to quit so many times. And while it's bad on the gun, it's even worse with melee. Hits have missed for six hours. Attacks just don't happen. Special and heavy are random. They might kill something and they might graze it. Sometimes enemies can hit you and you can't hit back. Leveling this warrior was an absolute chore, but it has all been worth it. We just beat the grenade, dude. Oh, let's get back into it. Right, we chat to the shaman, let him know I've gathered up all the warriors, then lead all three of them back to the hunter dude. Now, if you think leading one dumb NPC is bad, try leading three of them. These guys get stuck on every object going. It's like herding cats. Another cutscene. We have captured the bug and we should be hailed as heroes. I know I feel like one. More quests now. I'm sent to the western gate and told to have a guess. Did you say defend against three waves of enemies? Because yeah, that's an understandable guess and you are also correct. And then the game tells me to go to the western gate. Again, I'm already here. So I check the map and oh right, it means the northern gate. It's a typo. I mean that shows you how little care went into making this game. Or how few players even noticed that was a bug. You've got a very easy to fix typo in a very simple quest and it's not been fixed for several years. Defend the northern gate, then take another portal to move even further into the ruins. We are out of the dense jungle now and creeping into an overgrown temple. Vines and plants are reclaiming the structures. This dude tells us to find a doctor and then go to the science camp. Inside the temple and we find shaders. Those digital enemies from the start are oh, their back and after killing a few of them, my sword stops working. What? I can't swing it anymore. I checked my equipped items and it's gone. It's not in my inventory. Where did my sword go? I had it. I equipped it. I have been using it and now it's gone. My item just disappeared. Oh, fine. You know what? I'll use another weapon. Need to gather 10 shader essence, so kill 10 enemies. The temple is reminding me of the opening training level of Unreal Tournament 3, which is apt as they are both made in the same engine. Maybe there's an asset store somewhere they both borrowed from. It's not a badly designed area at all. The colours are good, the enemy placement's a bit all over the shop, but generally it's a pretty nice place. After collecting and handing in 10 shader essence, I now need to go and find 10 study notes, which means interact with 10 CDs on the floor, then pick up 10 items that that creates. Oh good, looks like we've moved on from the defending three waves bit and we're into the collecting 10 things bit of the game. The CD objects on the floor despawn when you interact with them, but then respawn a minute or two later, so it seems the best thing to do is just find an object far away from enemies and wait for it to come back, because the experience you get from handing in quests is vastly superior to the experience you get from killing enemies. Hand in all 10 to the dude and he sends me to the science camp, and then they send me to the bug hunter, and now I discover you can hop over this wall, but you can't hop back over this one. And the place I've hopped to doesn't have any scenery, which means I've likely just broken out of the map. Now, I don't really trust this game to remain stable at the best of times, so I hop right back on in. 
Normally, I'd be thrilled to boundary break in a game, but with Otherland, the whole game feels like it's held together with blue tack and wishes, so the less I can do to break it, the better. The bug hunter needs some help hunting bugs, and this NPC absolutely wrecks this wall with his gun. I mean, he does not stop shooting. He is determined to show the wall who's boss. I don't know if there's an enemy trapped behind there, or if the AI messed up, or if there's some real deep backstory with this NPC and this wall, but my god are they angry. I kill eight shaders and then extract some information from their corpse, and the sound effect for data extraction is the most hideous sound effect I've ever heard. It's offensively bad. And I had to endure this eight times, so you have to listen at least once. I'm sorry, but you need to experience this. This is what it sounds like getting data from a dead shader. I am sorry, and I do feel bad for making you listen to that, but if I had to experience it, I feel you have to as well to fully understand how weird this game actually is. Walk up onto this bridge and there's just a frozen NPC model. No collision, no interaction, nothing. Someone put this model here and thought, yes, this is good. This is how the game should look. This is where this belongs. Seriously, designers, how many drugs did you take before making this game? I pick up the magical glowing MacGuffin from the back of the temple, then take it back to the bug hunters, place the MacGuffin into the doodah, then defend the place from more bugs. Gotta say, the bug defense might go better if these defending NPCs actually shot at the bugs instead of shooting at literally everything else. Now we need to kill the boss shader, so we run to the other side of the temple and find this scaled up dude and start the fight. Now what are you expecting? Mechanics, attacks to dodge, red areas on the ground, sound cues, multiple health bars, environmental damage. Well, nope, 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 and nope. It's just a big, regular enemy. Now, it looks lovely. I love this digital style. I love its tendrils. I love the juxtaposition of digital enemies in a natural destroyed temple. I love the contrast it's creating, but my love of the aesthetics and the overall surreal nature of the game isn't enough to save it from being super awkward to play. Find the Doctor and defend him from waves of enemies. Oh good, I'd been missing that mechanic. Then escort him back through the temple to the portal outside. Now this section is annoying because you need to guide the Doctor outside, but the temple has a load of crumbled down walls and wooden barriers and the Doctor can't jump. So you need to lead him through essentially a maze. But the enemies keep attacking him and dragging him away and the Doctor doesn't move normally. He will stay still, then runs straight toward you for a bit, but can also overshoot where you are then he'll stop and then repeat. So it's sort of like guiding a giant lorry through a very enclosed space. It's not easy, but it is manageable, and I managed to get him through the temple until he gets to the steps outside and then just stands there doing nothing for about five minutes before finally running with me. We take the portal all the way back to the bug base, chat to the doctor, get the research notes off him from whatever he's found, give the research notes back to Dontree's boobs, then finally we travel all the way back to the main Lambda Mall and we earn the Bug Planet Steam Achievement. Boom! One step closer. The quest line now sends us back to Zabu's apartment and we are so close to that fourth achievement. I can feel it. That gorgeous, sexy steam pop-up happens and now we are off to Mars. Wait, what's that? We're not off to Mars. We're off to 8 squared, the chess world. No, Mars is the next achievement. I thought they'd go in order, you do world one, two, three, four. There are four achievements, there must be four worlds. This world, then that world. So I checked the wiki and... Oh no. Oh god, no. There are so many other worlds before we even get to Mars. The revolution on Mars might be the fourth Steam achievement, but it is far from the fourth world we'll end up visiting. So I guess... You're going to have to join me in part three when we continue our adventure into the madness with the fantasy chess world of 8 squared and I delve into researching the company behind this surreal game. I learn some very, very odd things, including their latest projects and their super strange YouTube channel. I have a feeling if I go down this rabbit hole of insane game and odd company, I'm going to discover some very weird things. But I guess that's what we're here for. So. 8 squared, the fantasy chess world, the next stop on our adventure to finish the most insane MMO on Steam, Otherland. Let's do this.
I hope you've been enjoying the maddening journey so far. As usual, a massive thank you to the Patreon supporters and Twitch subs. You are the people who make content like this possible. You can join the Patreon from only £1 a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and Discord. And, as always, have a great day.